but it's mainly about understanding where the examiners are coming from in kind of uh, limiting their acceptance of certain points to only what you see in the mark scheme and we're trying to justify that by using the questions and where the questions don't adequately link to the mark schemes you know we we at that point we can criticize the um, the examiners but again that's just that's kind of a, a subjective view someone else might be able to see the connection um, that we don't so anyway let's begin uh, in the, uh, 16, the Madidi National Park in South America rainforest is home to a variety of wide variety of species. The largest predator in the area is a jaguar. Is the jaguar? These large cats are well camouflaged and hunt mostly at night. A single individual can cover a very large area. In 2007, the Wildlife Conservation Society attempted to estimate the population of jaguars in the Madidi National Park. Digital camera traps were placed in areas that jaguars were likely to visit. If an infrared beam was broken by an animal, the camera was activated. The camera then took a photograph of the animal. Suggest why it was not appropriate to estimate the number of jaguars using the capture recapture technique okay so why was why would it have been uh, inappropriate to do it that way and then why did they do it the way that they did so um, I guess the most obvious reason is because of the capturing would have involved danger to um, for the for the capturer okay or as they refer to it the collector or as they say danger to the jaguar itself okay and the other thing they say that the estimate will be inaccurate because of low numbers okay that's fine um, low numbers means that the estimate is inaccurate okay I guess that links to the idea of low sample sizes so if your sample size is low that means that there's more error in the 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 number whereas a bigger sample size means that that, that can be more reliable and the idea is that if the um, if the jaguars are of low number then as as hinted here so what we're trying to see is like is there any information that's given to us that we can use um, so I guess the this little snippet here that a single individual can cover a very large area means that um, you wouldn't have like being in a particular area you wouldn't have been able to get that many jaguars so in that case we would have got low numbers and in that case the estimate therefore is um, not as accurate as a larger sample would have been okay that's fine uh, what else does it say it says allow catching more than one so it's, it's other right other ways of saying or implying that low numbers give you inaccurate estimates. Yep, um, it's saying that the ignore that ignore the jaguars being difficult to catch. Um, mm -hmm. Ignore that it is inhumane, cruel, or stressful. So ethical considerations are not being accepted here. Okay, part two. Most studies estimate the population density of jaguars in the South American rainforest to be five individuals per 100 kilometers squared. In the study, uh, the 100 camera traps were set up covering an area of 271 kilometers squared. 28 images of nine different jaguars were recorded. How well do these results support a population estimate 
of five individuals per 100 kilometers squared. First off, not really happy with this question. How well do these results support? I mean, that's not a very clear command or instruction. Okay, but we're going to do our best. And what we're going to do is we're going to see what we like. How do we how do we work this out? So what they're saying is that the estimate is five jags, okay, five jags per one hundred square kilometers. And what we saw was two hundred and seven. T, sorry, whoops, what we got was nine, nine Jaguars in 271 square kilometers, essentially, okay, um, and so what that equates to is, if we want to do it per 100, so if we divide 271 by 100, so 271 divided by 100 should give us 2.71, okay, and then divide 9, divide 9 by 200, 2.71, that should give us 3.32, 3.32. What I'm calculating here is, if if we got nine Jaguars in 271 kilometers, how many Jaguars would we, does that equate to per 100 square kilometers? So my calculation gives me 3.32. So I guess, you know, that, that means that, now if we check the mark scheme here, that means that this is lower than the estimate. Okay, so if we're answering the question, how well do these results support that? Then I guess point three, we look at point three in the mark scheme, we can say that, or we should say that it does not support. So I'm happy with that so far. So the first thing we do is do a calculation. The next thing that we do is, is say that this is lower than the estimation. The third thing that we do is say that this doesn't support, okay? But then the, the other marks are for saying that uh, or finding reasons why um, maybe that is not conclusive okay so we're thinking about um, was there any um, faults or any room for improvement in the investigation that would have meant that maybe there's still some room for interpreting the results slightly differently so the f point four refers to the repeatability of it. So we don't know how reliable these um, results are. Point five, um, I guess uh, one might say that three is close to five. I wouldn't, but it could be argued. Uh, number six, it could be that the in some individuals were not photographed. Point seven, that that there could be individuals that were not photographed and therefore uh, the, the estimate might even be higher than that. So I guess the idea being that 3.32 is the minimum um, that we know of, okay? And if anything, it's going to be higher than that. Okay, so I'm, I'm happy with that mostly. Um, Apart from um, I wasn't really too happy about the instruction of the question, but point three or part three of that, other evidence used to estimate Jaguar population includes footprints and reports of sightings by local humans, suggest one disadvantage of these methods for estimating the size of the Jaguar population. So human sightings, this is kind of straightforward and it's 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 a quite an open question open to the interpretation and many possible correct answers and so when we look at the mark scheme on the left hand side here you can see that um, there's you know there's a there's quite a, a wide open um, 
accommodation, shall we say, for uh, different things that you could say. So what, what's the unreliability of human sightings, misidentification, seeing the same individual twice, exaggeration, poor recollection, these things are all valid. If we look at the footprints then, um, again, misidentification of the footprints, um, the footprints could be lost. I, I mean, looking at the mark scheme, that's all fairly straightforward, so I'm going to move on from that one. Okay. So, Medidi National Park is also home to approximately 260,000 humans who support themselves by means of cattle farming and the production of timber and Brazil nuts, a large nut harvested from a local native tree. Conservationists have been working with local people to promote sustainable use of these resources and government agencies to maintain the quality of the national park. Explain. Well, that's much better. Explain why Medidi National Park is an example of conservation rather than preservation. Okay, so here we go back to our content and we remember that conservation is about active measures to preserve, uh, or sorry, active measures to maintain ecosystems in a sustainable way while using some natural resource within those ecosystems for the human population. Whereas preservation is more sim simply protection of an area um, in order to keep the ecosystem as it is. Okay, so that's what we have to refer to. So um, if we think about the key points being sustainability, all right, we have to think of a resource that is being used, okay, and we have to think about, you know, what types of human activity is making sure that that is happening, okay, and that's essentially, that's what the, the mark scheme is referring to. Okay, so if I mean, my ideal answer here would be that we are kind of looking to the resource that we are, are looking at is the timber and Brazil nuts. So the resource is timber and Brazil nuts. Okay, we, you know, we're, we're getting that's a resource that we are or the humans are using from this particular ecosystem we need to use it in a sustainable way okay and it is requiring activity you know active active measures from the humans in terms of what they are doing okay so the government agencies are maintaining the quality of the national park uh, the local people are promoting sustainable use of the resources so because we have, you know, active measures from humans, not simply protection, we have a resource that we are gaining from the ecosystem, but we are trying to use it in a sustainable way. This is all pointing towards conservation and not preservation.